Good morning and welcome to the week ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 10th of January 2020 and the time has just gone 11.10 GMT. And I'm looking ahead to next week which is Monday the 13th or the Friday the 17th of January. Now before we discuss some of the big economic and corporate events of next week, let's just take a, a moment to take stock of what's happened uh, in, in the past few days. Um, it's been obviously a very turbulent week. Uh, between the US and uh, Iran tensions, but uh, a couple of days ago, President Trump made it very clear um, that he's not looking for an all-out conflict with Iran, and that had a dramatic impact on the financial markets. We saw a complete turnaround and a complete reversal of what was going on. Uh, while, while tensions were high, stocks were lower, gold was higher, the Japanese yen was higher, and of course, oil was higher. Post-President Trump's um, strong suggestion that he wasn't going to be looking to start, start a fight with Iran. Uh, we, we saw gold tumble. We saw the U.S. We saw the Japanese yen fall. We saw we saw oil fall. And conversely, we saw stocks rally. Uh, the stock 600 uh, went on to hit, in Europe went on to hit uh, a fresh record high. Uh, we also saw record highs uh, in some of the major U.S. indices as well. So. Sentiment is clearly very much in risk-off mode, but uh, I'm obviously recording this video about two hours and 20 minutes ahead of the U.S. non-farm payrolls report, so obviously sentiment could change between now and things going out. Uh, but for the time being, it seems that the U.S. US Iran issue has been put to bed. Obviously things could change, but for the time being, that's the way it's looking. So obviously keep an eye on what's going on uh, between Washington, D.C. and Iran over the next few days. Uh, but it's also worth noting um, that China is going to come back into the fold. Uh, next week, on the 15th, uh, we're going to have the official signing of the U.S. of Phase 1 of the U.S.-China trade uh, trade deal. And I suspect we could see the kind of wider optimism um, continue on the run to that. The optimism that you know saw um, U.S. stock markets push higher in late December and into early 2020. Um, but what I suspect is going to be a, a bigger problem down the line. It's going to be phase two. Uh, it's all well and good signing phase one and the Chinese government uh, um, looking to uh, ramp up their imports of U.S. agricultural goods, which is great for U.S. US farmers. But at some point, they're going to come on to more trickier topics, such as uh, the Beijing government funding Chinese company Chinese companies in China, uh, and also things like intellectual property rights of you know international and particularly U.S. firms operating in China. What's going to happen there? Uh, intellectual property rights. These are much trickier, much more complicated, more, um, much more serious topics. And even though I suspect President Trump is going to start using this as a way of um, bolstering his own popularity by, you know, by doing kind of round two of the U.S.-China trade war, showing the American voters that he's out there, you know, doing, trying to put America, you know, putting America first, you know. But that that would be looking to get a garner support with American voters because keep in mind President Trump is looking to get reelected in November. But I suspect you know we could see it for a shakedown in a, in global stock markets in the months to come. It depends, it depends whether President Trump looks to raise the issue of Phase Two. He may like to do it shortly after Phase One, uh, which he suggested before. But then again, he doesn't always um, stick to his word. So be very mindful that whenever Phase One is all the way, that leaves the gate open. For phase two to come on the horizon, that could be in a few days. It could be in a few months, but I suspect that's going to be on the cards. Also, a wider theme for 2020. I wouldn't be surprised if he takes the kind of economic fight to the EU as well for the same reasons. He he looks he wants you know he wants a scenario whereby he's looking at getting a better deal for America. But I also think towards the back end of the year he'll look to actually wrap things up. Just because he would I love he'd be tweeting about the U.S. stock markets achieving all-time highs in advance of a, of the voters going to the polls. So it's kind of a, in the you know, next few months time we could be lower, but towards the back end of the year we could be higher. That's what I suspect. Um, these are the kind of the kind of probably the biggest issue to uh, to, to look ahead to next week. Uh, we also have some economic indicators coming out of China, such as retail sales and industrial production. This gives a good indication of the, of the kind of how things are panning out in the Chinese economy. The latest kind of say the likes of um, Manufacturing and service figures have been all right. Nothing impressive, but you know, okay. Uh, manufacturing is uh, appear to be better than the manufacturing in the U.S. and Germany. Um, we're also going to have an update uh, on from the um, from the U.S. beige book 
That's going to give us a snapshot of what's going on with the state of the US economy next week. That's on the 15th. Uh, we have some UK economic indicators coming out on Monday the 13th, um, which is the uh, manufacturing production and industrial production. Nothing really overly important there, but it gives indication of the state of the health of the UK economy. Uh, we have a couple of earnings numbers out from the UK next week. Uh, on the 14th, we have Q1 figures from Boohoo. Uh, on the 15th, we have Q4 figures from Persimmon, the house builder. And on the 20th, we have Q... Apologies. On the 16th, on the 16th of January, we have um, Q3 figures from Whitbread. Uh, you know, the, the, the retail sector is going to be, and the kind of leisure sector is going to be very much in focus for the for, for traders, seeing as we had some not so we had some mixed uh, updates in terms of uh, corporate earnings in relation to, say, JD Sports and Super Dry uh, today. Um, so keep in mind what's going on with the UTL retail sector. By and large, it's, it hasn't been great. Uh, also, at the back end of the next week, we have Delta Airlines uh, reporting their figures next week on Tuesday the 14th, and uh, tr tr next week. U.S. bank earnings will be in focus. The likes of J.P. Morgan, Chase, and Citigroup, as well as uh, as well as Morgan Stanley and Wells Fargo. Now, what I'm going to do now is take a quick look at some of the major markets, this, uh, equity markets, to see how things are panning out. So, if we take a look at the broad strokes, uh, the wider picture since mid-December, the FTSE 100 has been pushing higher. In late December, it hit its highest level uh, since kind of. Uh, June, July, uh, late no late, late July. Things so things are looking in fairly good shape on, on that front, and we, we managed to pull back most of the gains, most of the ground that was lost recently. So if we do manage to take out the December high, we could then be looking at retesting the highs achieved in July, and that'll be in around seven thousand seven hundred and thirty-one. The uh, the German market, by contrast, is in far better shape. Uh, not too far off, but basically hit, essentially hit a, you know, a two-year high uh, on the on the DAX. Uh, we're currently expecting the DAX is currently trading in around thirteen thousand five hundred and thirty-five there thereabouts. We can see here uh, that we've managed to recoup all the ground that was lost recently. We're now you know back basically back uh, essentially on a two-year high. Levels last seen in, in January. 2018. So if we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 13,600. And any and if that level is taken out, we then kind of it's be quite likely we would have paved the way for further gains to be made. If we do see any kind of pullbacks, uh, decent pullbacks in the DAX, we could see support come into play from this blue line here, the fifth of the moving average uh, in around 13,200, just shy of it. We did see some consolidation in that area, but obviously keep in mind. During the radiant tensions, we did see aggressive moves below it. So if, it's only if you have a major sell-off can we look, you know, we're looking at taking out these lows. And should that be the case, the low of mid-December in around 12,885, there thereabouts, could they come into play from there? Looking at what's going on on the S&P 500. S&P 500 racked up an all-time high yesterday. We're expecting to open when the cash market gets underway. Um, in a few hours, they open at, at a new all-time high. We're calling it at 3,283. U.S. stock markets are doing very well. The trend is clearly to the upside. Should we go beyond? Should, get, should this trend continue? We could be looking at targeting 3,290, and then 3,300 will be the kind of next big psychological, psychological number to keep an eye out on. Um, it's only really if I have, have, have a major shakeup in, in market in the, in the um, price action uh, on the back of the payrolls. Report potentially, you could see the market head back towards this zone here, this north of 3,240, perhaps 3,255, there thereabouts. Uh, but it's only, it's only really if you're going to take out this low here, the low of uh, January the 8th, in around 3,181, because then we begin to be worried um, about you know, the recent bullet trend. But like I said, it's so strong, even if you go below that, support could easily come into play from the 5th day moving average in here. Now, the reason why I talked about the FTSE, the DAX, and the and the, uh, and the S&P 500, uh, one of the tenets of Dow theory is that uh, the averages must confirm each other. And what we saw there was they're all moving in the same direction. And essentially, what that, theory, that, com 
that what that says is that you can, if the market is moving a certain direction, if similar markets to it are also moving in the same direction, you can be more confident that the wider trend is going to continue. So we saw here that the S&P 500 is the strongest, the DAX uh, is performing very, very well, and the FTSE is, 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 uh, is probably underperforming, but they're all moving higher. So the sentiment in global stocks uh, appears to be on the upside. Conversely, we've seen a move to the downside in gold recently because risk uh, sentiment has turned to a very much risk on favor. Um, so we're seeing here after hitting um, a, after hitting a multi-year high here in, um, on Wednesday, we saw a sharp reversal of fortune for gold. You know, we're seeing the market push lower. This was a very you know is this driven on the rate intention, the, the tension, the tension that come off. The long wick suggests major indecision. The wider upper trend can be ignored, but if we do have a strong job, job support, we could see for, and a stronger US dollar that could impact gold. We could see the market be pushed down towards this area here, 1530 or perhaps 1520. And it's only really, if things really turn off for gold, could we look at heading back towards the psychological 1500. But should the wider upper trend continue, we could be looking at heading back north of 1600. Well, that's all for me this week. Thank you, thank you for listening and thank you very much.